Welcome and thank you for joining us for the next episode of the All For Inclusion pod. Um, so we're, we're doing something or speaking to someone who's going to talk to us about something a little bit, uh, a little bit different today. Um, something that, that blows my mind a little bit. So you might find that, uh, that I'm a bit out of my depth in, uh, in some of these conversations. Um, but I'll welcome in, uh, Giselle. How are you doing, Giselle? I'm doing well. How are you, Scott? Yeah, yeah, good. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much good. for uh, for joining us. Absolutely. You say you're out of your depth, but I bet you we're going to get on a level playing field real quick. You'll see. You'll see. Don't worry about it. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. So, because I will do an absolutely terrible job of introducing you. Do you mind just um, telling people who are listening uh, who you are, what you're sure. about, what you do? Absolutely. So I'm Giselle Mota. I'm based in New York City in the United States. I have uh, a background in really talking about the future of work and how organizations have to think about their evolving workforce, the work that's getting done, where this workplace is and how it keeps on evolving and changing over time. And I recently moved from that uh, role into now focusing on inclusion in that space. So an inclusive future of work. How do we develop uh, products and how do we think about all that I just mentioned with everybody in mind? And that's what I do in my day job at ADP. Um, on the side, what I do is a project that I'd like to talk to you about today in the audience is, uh, is called Nifty Collective. It's basically about emerging technology that I just mentioned, like AI and now Web3, um, which will, you know, it's on the blockchain and it's, it's talking about uh, NFTs and all these kind of things, but also the metaverse, which is you can go to a concert, you can visit with friends and socialize with them, you can work together with your teams at work in a virtual environment. So what I wanted to do with that emerging tech is to make sure that people with disabilities don't get left out. So we created this uh, project called Nifty Collective. It works with global people with disabilities. Uh, and there are some of them are musicians, uh, actors, thought leaders, authors, like all over the space. And uh, basically we're creating avatars for them to use across these emerging technologies. Excellent, excellent. So when you say metaverse and when you describe this to, to me, have you seen the film Ready Player One? Hmm. I, you know what? I have not sat down to watch this thing, which sacrilege. I'm over here in this space and have not seen the movie, but I've heard about it a lot. So uh, I'll tell you that. So, so to, to me, that's uh, kind of what it's like where someone plugs into a game and they can walk down almost like a, a virtual high street and go yep. into different games, concerts, etc. And then, um, but you know, we want people who are disabled to, to see themselves as disabled or people right. to choose to be who they want to be. I guess that's the uh, the key. You hit it. That's it. That's what it's about, because in all these experiences in tech, like there, there's not a lot of choice for you to be who you are. So, for example, you can become an avatar across any experience. And basically, you have to be a Eurocentric model in most cases your body is of a certain type. So you can't have hips and curves and <laughs> you can't be a plumpy person because the models that were designated for these avatars are trained on one kind of set of people. Um, and then, so just take that as an example and imagine you don't have people who were born without arms or legs that show up in, in these experiences as themselves. You have to disguise yourself in an able body. And maybe you want to do that, and that can be a fun experience. Maybe you want to defy odds, and perhaps you know you uh, you you were an amputee, or you had different, you know, you were limb different, and then all of a sudden now you have legs in an environment. That's what exists today. But what doesn't exist is a choice to be yourself, and that's why we created our project to give people that choice. If you want to be uh, a quad in like an avatar that's quadriplegic, you can with our avatar. If you want to be uh, someone who's blind, deaf neurodiverse with dyslexia like myself or anything else you can show up in that way excellent excellent so um so should we start having a having a little bit of a look at uh at some of these yeah let's do it now i say that and people who are watching this will expect things just to uh just, just to, to pop appear up. yeah Listen, we're talking it, about tech but sometimes you know we're not <laughs> 
<laughs> Sometimes tech does not cooperate with us, so it's how it is. But while you exactly. try to pull that up, while you try to pull that up, I'll share. We have uh, some people that we've been working with, um, and uh, so recently we just did an avatar of Lex Gillette, who is a uh, Paralympian. Um, he is an amazing athlete, and uh, we'll be putting out his his avatar soon. We're working with Steve Way, who's an actor on Hulu um, and has done some. He's a comedian and an actor. And so we're going to be putting out his avatar and several others in the fall. Um, and then I'd love to show the group here kind of what we've been doing thus far with other avatars so they can get kind of an experience. So Perfect. scroll down. Perfect. So we're on your uh, on your Instagram page. Now, there will be some people who are just uh, who are just listening in. So we'll need to have uh, some descriptions here. Absolutely. So, um, so we'll bring up uh, we'll bring up this this character. Sure. Let's describe. So, so I'll describe on the screen here what people are seeing is uh, Isaac Harvey is a black man with short black hair and he's sitting in his wheelchair. Um, he has a white shirt on, some jeans and white socks. He has no arms and uh, the feet that he does have are uh, kind of inverted towards his body and they're covered in white socks. He's seated next to his avatar that is in the same description. The avatar seated in a white wheelchair. Uh, the avatar has black, is, is, is suited up with our regular uh, nifty collective outfit, which is kind of an urban utilitarian kind of cool look. And they got a black beanie with the nifty collective logo on it, black glasses. Um, Isaac's avatar also has a black beard and mustache because Isaac also has a black beard and mustache along with his short black hair. And this avatar is wearing black, a black jumpsuit, which is uh, all connected together. Um, again, no arms. The feet are inverted in towards each other as well. And that's what we have for Isaac. Excellent, excellent. And we'll move on to, uh, say we move on. We, we will get to uh, get to someone else here. So this here is one of your, uh, your character reveals for, uh, for Dr. Uh, Tiffany Jenner. That's right. Dr. Tiffany Janas is an interesting one that we wanted to include because our collection includes people who are of different races and ethnicities, different gender identities. So Tiffany, uh, Dr. Tiffany Jana goes as non, is identifies as non-binary. You can see their character actually has uh, their signature blue hair that they like to wear. This is a short brown curly or short blue uh, curly hairstyle. It's like a tapered cut and the avatar dons that same look. Uh, this character also has glasses on with a unique design, which is our nifty logo inside of the glasses. That logo is because Dr. Tiffany Jana has an unseen disability. So like my character also has that because I have dyslexia or a neurodivergence. Dr. Tiffany, Ch Tiffany Jana has um, a chronic illness. And so you can't really see that in, in that in their case. So we wanted to reveal that in these glasses. So all of our characters that have something that you might not be able to see will don those those sort of glasses. OK, excellent. Excellent. So we'll come on. I'll come out. I'll click the X and uh, we'll come out. And actually, it might be uh, just as easy just to, to scroll down. Yeah, right, so click on anything you'd like got, to see. Uh, we've got Tiffany. Is it Tiffany Yu? Yes, Tiffany Yu is an Asian American uh, activist, CEO of Diversibility, uh, an amazing figure for disability inclusion. Uh, has been doing great work in their in her field, and uh, she actually has brachial plexus injury, where she acquired her disability after an accident that actually took the life of her father. And now she's dedicated her life to talking about disability inclusion. Uh, it's something that in some cultures is taboo. Um, and it's also something kind of sometimes seen as, seen as, oh, poor thing, right? We're worthy of pity. Um, but Tiffany is dispelling all those myths and showing that you can be amazing and powerful, uh, even if you have, uh, uh, if you're a person with a disability, that doesn't define, you know, what you're capable of doing or the impact that you can have on the world. So uh, also, uh, so as I mentioned, their character wears a, a cast over their, I believe their right arm. Uh, because of the injury to that arm. The arm is is thinner than the other arm uh, and hand. 
uh, because of the injury sustained. And uh, Tiffany is an Asian American, light, uh, fair skinned, uh, dark brown, long hair, um, and the avatar is expressing the same look. Excellent, excellent. So, by <laughs> by doing this, you're you're meeting some uh, some amazing people, aren't you? Yes. Some, uh, I mean. Out of the people that you've met, is there uh, is there any that you would say, right, well, these are standout people for any particular reason? Yeah. Yeah, we have met some interesting people. And I'll tell you that it's been through the project, but it's also been just in the network before we started this project. I just had so many amazing people with disabilities that I was connected to already that I just reached out to them and asked them if they wanted to be a part of this, and they did. So yes, we I've met Mary Harmon. Mary Harmon has taught me certain things. Uh, she is a, a Latina who's based in Hawaii and is deaf and uh, also does consulting and information and has these videos that go out uh, teaching people about what to do and how to address people um, who are deaf. Her avatar actually has a hand up um, showing the high symbol. We plan on being able to animate her character more to be able to do certain things in sign language uh, when we get to that point. But she's an amazing person and I'll say this, it's so gracious. The moment that I talked to her, the way I'm talking to you here, we jumped on a call and there was an interpreter on the call the, the time that we had our first call and was basically signing between her and I. But there was so much I was picking up on without the need of the interpreter. It was just like reading body language, uh, understanding some of the nuances. I don't know if it's because we're both Latina and I was picking up on some of the gestures and some of the things that she was expressing, but uh, an amazing individual. Yeah, Excellent. so that's that's one. and. And really just people as well have approached me from across corporations, organizations that, you know, some are have disabilities and some don't. And just the level of interest that people have to want to do good, because maybe some of them own technology, but it hasn't been very inclusive yet of people with disabilities. So they're asking, like, how can we partner with you? How can we collaborate? What can we design together? What can we do? And I love it. I love those those people that I've been meeting. Excellent, excellent. So here's uh, here's oh, and this this individual named Scott that runs this All for Inclusion podcast is another great. Yeah, yeah, another great person I've met along the way. Had to throw that in there. That's uh, that's that's what I was, you know, like hooking for at the beginning. I know. I caught I caught it late. (laughs) So this is someone else, uh, Victoria. She's uh, she's been on the podcast before. Um, Victoria, yes. So tell me a little bit about Victoria's avatar. Victoria, Victoria is a fashion, um, is, is, is a fashion designer and even a consultant in disability inclusive fashion. Loved what she's doing and what she's all about. She is based over there in the UK, actually. So is uh, Isaac Harvey, uh, who you saw a moment ago. So her avatar, we wanted to include the cane that she uses. She she is can often be seen walking around with a cane. So her avatar has a white cane in hand. Uh, she also wears her signature red lipstick and uh, she loves monochromatic colors like black. So we made sure to feature that and wear some earrings because she's fashionable. And so we wanted to include that in her avatar as well. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. You mentioned Isaac. I was uh, had a half an hour chat with Isaac this morning. Oh, nice. So, uh, so yeah. So I mentioned to him that, uh, that we was, uh, we was on the call. Um, so how many uh how many of these avatars have you created roughly so far we have like 20 at the moment um and then we have more coming um under production because we've had um, a a really overwhelming amount of people kind of reaching out to us to ask us if they if we can build their characters as well so we have uh, our collection is going to about to double um by fall and winter this year excellent excellent yeah. and you've had and i'm going to keep switching into different things on your on sure. your instagram so so you've had some uh, some very good sort of reviews and different things like that over here in the uk as well as i assume over with yourself as well in the in the us right um how's that kind of been for yourself um you know the interest sort of shown in this yeah it's been interesting because people, when they talk about it, it's a mixed review, but most of it is very positive. 
Um, but the mixed review comes in that Web3 and the metaverse, because when I said Web3, when we create these avatars, it's not just like a cute little avatar and it's just sitting there and we just created a drawing, right? It's actually uh, becomes a, a non-fungible token for the people who own them. So we gift an, an NFT to the users or the people who represent these characters. So in many cases, you know, this is new. People are owning NFTs and trading them and doing all that. It's a new world based on blockchain and digital currencies. And a lot of times either people with disabilities haven't owned one traditionally because uh, to even go through the process of getting on an NFT market, it's not the most accessible. Like it's, it's not user friendly to people with disabilities for the most part. And it's not inclusive of people like you don't see a lot of artwork out there and representation of people with disabilities. There are some, there are some great ones actually, but um, you don't see something like this. And so that's one way in which we've gotten to Web3 and Web3 is a world where there's a lot of skepticism. There's either hype or skepticism. <laughs> and the same thing with the metaverse. So people are either all into it and excited about it and getting into experiences. And then others are like, let's stop talking about a virtual world and just talk about the physical world. We have enough issues here in the physical world. We should be paying attention to that, which I don't disagree with either camp of thought. I'm more about, hey, if this experience is here and it's going to keep on evolving and growing, then I want to be rebellious enough to make sure that I pull along with me people with disabilities to ensure that they are included in the experience. And so that's why we take these avatars and we're creating them into like augmented reality experiences, uh, games, like all kinds of things that people can interact with. So mixed reviews of all around and a lot of discussions around like what is the metaverse, you know, capabilities of doing anything good for, for disability inclusion or even just diversity, equity, and inclusion at all? And same with Web3. And so those are the conversations that we have a lot. It's not just about the artwork. It's more about, like, the impact. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. And so you, you see um, kind of in the metaverse, and, you know, I might be going down a bit of a rabbit hole here with this one. Oh. But, you, you know, you see people... Uh, and you've got their characters and that they can walk up walk up steps yeah. etc you know is there any any place at the moment where people in a wheelchair go up a, a ramp alongside a steps is that something that's sort of coming in yes so more people are thinking about that and designing experiences where even though it's not you physically doing the action of having to walk but they're like, you know what, if we're going to create a space, we're going to take out stairs and we're going to make it, you know, completely accessible to anyone. And instead of having to go up even a ramp, maybe you just teleport yourself, you know, like even imagination can come yeah, into yeah. play. Maybe you just teleport yourself from one room to the other room without having to walk or roll a wheelchair. So there's a lot of talk around things like that as well. Yes. So he's making it, you know, I guess with tele teleporting accessible to absolutely uh, absolutely everyone That's and i right. guess when we're looking at uh, at something like um the metaverse which is fictional why can't we uh why can't it be completely fictional absolutely so what, what are we seeing here then giselle uh here you're seeing a building in paris france and a signage that was talking about uh it has our book two characters one is me sitting next to isaac harvey we're both wearing some lime green glasses and uh, a lime green jumpsuit, um, and we're having a, a tan beanie on. So it was referring to Viva Tech is the largest European conference uh, in tech that happens every year. We had the privilege of being featured there this year. So when guests walked up to the signage of Viva Tech, it was a large sign. And by the way, this is a conference that has had speakers such as Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg and a bunch of other people throughout the years, regardless of how you feel about those two individuals. But we were there at the, at the conference um, through augmented reality with our characters. So when somebody walked up to the signage and it has huge sign that said Viva Tech, the letters, you were able to take out your mobile device put it over the sign and you would see Isaac Harvey's character was there and you would be able to see him pop up like in front of you and you'd be able to in like life size and you'd be able to walk around and maybe take a selfie picture with it or do whatever you wanted. And, and it was a pretty cool opportunity and experience. Excellent. Excellent. So what was it that, um, 
that drove you to to get involved? Yeah. You know, um, the past couple of years, uh, with everything that happened in the world, even beyond the pandemic, and also the pandemic really highlighted the fact that a lot of people are 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 underrepresented and a lot of people are not included in certain things. So we saw how many people with disabilities had certain challenges that other people didn't have during the pandemic. And you know, lacks of access into things, lack of consideration of people with disabilities that needed, like even for example, people with suffered uh, regular migraine headaches and needed to get a Botox injection to, to alleviate those things, weren't able to get the treatment that they needed because it wasn't considered essential. Right. It wasn't considered one of the things that you really needed to do at that time. It was like elective. Um, so the pandemic, racial issues around the world, um, all the things that started coming up, all of that started to make me think about, like, personally ask myself, what am I doing with my time? How am I exerting my energy to help and make a difference? Right. Instead of just getting angry, frustrated, depressed about the state of the world, how can I take that energy and focus it in on something positive? So I created Nifty Collective. I started to think about my own identity. I'm an Afro Latina, a woman of color. I have an unseen disability of dyslexia. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna be true to me. And I'm gonna be true to my heart of wanting to like help other people to um, advance forward and be able to have opportunities. Uh, and so I made this because I see that Web3 and Metaverse aren't going anywhere. It's gonna continue to advance. It's tech that keeps on growing. It's actually based a lot of times on artificial intelligence and different uh, emerging tech. And, and since I'm a geek and a nerd, I thought, you know, how can I merge both of these loves and do something good? And the, the project came to be. Hmm. And, and it is, um, it, you know, Nifty is very diverse because, you know, what you find is that, um, I mean, especially over here, I find that companies or businesses will say, right, we're, you know, we're diverse because we've got an equal amount of men as we've got an equal mm -hmm. amount of women or, you know, half of our border of color or, you know, but it's not everything Yeah. when, when you've got everything. That's true. That is true. Well, well put. I think, you know, we often forget that disability is diversity we forget that like people often consider that as like the last thing on their list if they ever start talking about disability and then when they do talk about it they talk about it in terms of accessibility it's like there's more to it we want to be represented in your tech experiences we want to see ourselves in those experiences we want to be a part of those experiences and how they're shaped right in fact we have we're working soon with a a producer of this is part of a large technology organization and they're creating this gallery this art gallery that's virtual we are going to put our avatars and, and characters inside of that gallery and we're going to make sure that people who are blind or low vision can enjoy that experience by making it accessible and descriptive enough for people that if you can't see and you don't have sight you could still enjoy uh, a virtual art gallery right so there's there's a lot of opportunities for us to include uh, disability along the way with the project. Excellent, excellent. So, what are your kind of you know apart from doubling the size of your uh, of your yeah. Is it collection or collective? Do you call you it? You can call collective? them either one. It's a collective of people, but it's a collection of the art that we're doing. So it's all, either one. <laughs> so apart, aside from doubling that what's next on the horizon so next is we've gotten approached by a lot of organizations who want to see these characters come to life and help us bring them to life so what we're going to be doing is focusing on developing games in different formats one games where we can educate people who don't have disabilities on how to interact with whether it's our character with quadriplegia or our character uh, who is has muscular dystrophy and has to wear a trachea, um, you know, attached at all times, or uh, whether it's a, a, a interacting with a blind individual or all sorts of a wide variety of people who are representative in our characters. Often people don't realize, like, what should you do? How do you approach? What do you say? Like, if you were to serve someone, what would you do, right? So we're coming up with different ways in which to develop gaming experiences and also we want those gaming experiences to be accessible for people with disabilities to enjoy as well. So we're working yeah. on that. 
uh, coming up with as many ways as possible to enter into metaverse and web uh, three experiences. So we're taking the whole NFT thing and we're trying to see what do we do as a next iteration of that? Um, how do we create immersive experiences? How do we do like uh, more augmented reality experiences, virtual reality experiences? Like how do we go further and beyond, right? So we're working on that now. Have a lot of speaking engagement and opportunities coming up where uh, people are asking us to present our characters and we've been doing it already in conferences with big corporations, events where they want to hear about what we're doing, but how they should be thinking about disability inclusion in tech too. So yeah, all that is kind of on the horizon right now. Um, have a few big uh, publishing groups. The one that you pulled up earlier was PC Magazine, but we have others as well that are just you know on standby waiting for us to give them a story to continue talking about Nifty Collective. So that's going to be on the works as well. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So, I mean, aside from sort of leading the way yourself, you're pulling others uh along with you um i guess you're 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 pulling some uh some small businesses but some large businesses as well yes. some corporations that have maybe turned you know a blind eye to it and uh and, and are now realizing that hang on if we don't do something about this we're going to be the ones left behind Right. And it's interesting that a lot of companies like you just mentioned haven't been paying attention to uh, disability as diversity. Um, and even just recently, there's even the NAS, uh, some certain groups approached in, from the NASDAQ and to others to try to push it as, hey, as part of the requirements that companies look at for diversity, equity, inclusion, please account for disability. And so we're seeing it from legislation all the way down. There was a legislation that came out the other day around accessibility for virtual reality. If you can't um, you know, in, uh, provide disability inclusion in a virtual reality experience, right? Then, then you need to reframe and restructure how you're doing. So that's even coming down from the top down. Uh, and so we'll, we'll see more to come. And I'm glad that, that that's moving in that direction. Excellent. Excellent. So, a little bit more just to touch on before we, uh, before we, you know, turn off. Um, tell us a little bit about. I mean, you've you mentioned earlier that you've got uh, dyslexia. Um, how was that impacting you in school and your career? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> I think you know. Till this day, sometimes I still say some things backwards because I don't know if, and I have to probably get further analysis on everything because I don't know if it's just the dyslexia alone. It can be a little bit of um, like a disp uh, like a, a speech as well that kind of comes into play. But sometimes I find myself thinking backwards. And so my speech will come out that way as well. Like I'll flip words. But when I was a kid, I really thought that I was subpar. I thought that I was not intelligent. I thought I was dumb and, and unable to do things. I couldn't capture the information that my teacher would say. I thought I got it at the moment. And then I'd go back home and be like, what? But the teacher said this and that. They're like, no, nope, that's that wasn't it. And I had a lot of problems with like reading retention and reading comprehension. Um, so, but thankfully with time, with good teachers, a good mother, you know, people who believed in me along the way, I was able to kind of turn it into something that was a skill and a strength of mine, where I developed another sense of a perception or perspective, where now it's in my benefit to see things in a different way, where now I have a more holistic approach. I could look back and see things that sometimes other people don't. And uh, it's like, it's dyslexic thinking. And it's a skill set that LinkedIn actually just uh, put as a, a, an official skill when you go and put your skills, I'm a good resume writer. I'm a good salesperson. I have dyslexic thinking is now as official skill set. So I learned that with time. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. And then, um, you know, how does it, uh, how, how does it impact you on, let's say day to day life? So yeah. if you was to go to, uh, to a restaurant, would it impact you in any way there? <laughs> yes, I often see things uh, reverse even on the menu, and I'll go to probably say it that way as well. So um, I, I gave a TEDx talk uh, some years ago, and I spoke about how I went to a Starbucks. And when I went to go do my order, I said it completely backwards, and the person's like, yeah, we don't have that. And I was like, but I'm like looking at the menu, trying to say what it is that I want, but I flipped it around, and it happens a lot. So yeah, in day-to-day -day life, little things like that happen that really, to me, are laughable. At this point, you know, I know what I'm trying to say. 
But at work and other things that I try to do, I already know that I need tools as smart as I can come across as being. And I think I am very intelligent at this point. I'm, I believe that, right? I didn't believe it as a kid. But I need tools like grammar checks. I need spell check. I need something to help me put my sentences, structure my sentences in a way where I'm not thinking backwards and putting my sentences structured in a, in a weird way, in a, in a structured backwards way. So I need those tools and I use them. I use them, especially if I'm going to like really have to send out a message to uh, my company or client or whomever. I really I can't just type it up and send it. I need to type it up, have something review it reread it and, and then send it. So that's, you yeah. know, the kind of extra work that I do behind the scenes that people don't see. Yeah. And I guess then if, if you're a business listening to this and you've got an employee or you're an, at an interview stage and someone mentions to you that, uh, that they're dyslexic, those tools are, are very easily available just yes. so the person can come in, feel secure, and just work because yeah, that's what and, people want to do. And don't give that individual 150 pages of a handbook of something that you expect them to read because at least for me, and I think a lot of people with dyslexia, they prefer audio. They prefer to like listen to something. And if it is in writing, make sure that the font has enough space in between and there's dyslexic approved font that you could use on your documents to help somebody really kind of take in the information. Okay, excellent. And does does paper color um, support you at all? Hmm, I haven't noticed that. I have not noticed, but you know what? I think I'm always drawn to minimalistic things. I'm drawn to plain. So if there's a lot of distraction on the page, and if it was like a color that's too vibrant, if it's pattern in the background, I need something as plain as possible so that my eyes that already have a distraction when I'm trying to read, like, It'll skip and go to different parts. I need something very seamless, very straight lined, and then I can take that information in. Good question. Never, never thought of that. Yeah, it's just something that's just going to keep you on on point. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> okay. So before we uh, before we wrap up, then uh, you know what sort of message, whether it be uh, regarding dyslexia, whether it be regarding web three metaverse nfts any other sort of words that we've talked sure. about that i don't understand uh any other message any last message for anyone listening today absolutely look technology has always and will always continue to evolve to years ago when uh, so i'll give you a quick one so that you have something that you'll be like oh okay watch web one was the first iteration of the internet and so it was when, you know, we were like, ah, 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 you have mail, like all that kind of stuff like that. Like that was, that was the first iteration of the internet, old school. Then came the second web two, right? That was web one. Web two is like, you're on social media, you're over here watching YouTube, like you're doing all the things, right? Like we've always interacted with the internet. Web three is what we're talking about now, where people can now not only upload a video on YouTube, for example, and YouTube owns your video, right? Or the, Instagram owns some of your, you know, those pictures and those things. They monetize off of it and all that. Web three is a world where you own. You, there's not a middleman. You own it. It's based on a blockchain, so that means that it's always authenticated to you. You uploaded a video. You're the owner. You want to monetize of it. That's that's on you to do. And so um, also in web and metaverse is just like we've been building for many many years uh, virtual experiences. Now we're just finding new ways to. Um, interact with those virtual experiences and make them more normal. So now, you know, instead of only experiencing something with the, an expensive goggle set that might even give you like uh, dizziness and motion sickness, it's not just about virtual reality anymore. It's about augmented reality. It's about different experiences you can have just from the comfort of your computer. Now, all that to say, my last word is because tech is going to continue to evolve, we need to make sure that everybody gets to participate in it. And my everybody definition for this purpose is people with disabilities. I want to make sure they're not left out. And that's it. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so, yeah. So um, thank you very much for listening today. Um, there will be some links in the show notes. Um, so we'll make sure that you've got the ability to link in with Giselle in the show notes 
to see Nifty Collective on Instagram, etc. Anything else uh, that Giselle thinks you might want to see will be in the show notes. So, uh, so click there for the links. Um, thank you very, very much for listening. And Giselle, thank, thank you, you for joining us. Thank you. It's awesome.